Hi, everyone. You're watching White Mountains TV. I'm Chris Prue, joined remotely by Jim Salji, who is the foliage expert for Yankee Magazine and NewEngland.com. Thanks for joining us today, Jim. Sure. Good to be with you, Chris. And you're going to answer all our pressing questions about fall foliage. First of all, my first question is, does it really change from year to year? What, uh, what factors uh, come into play when, you know, when determining when peak foliage is going to be and how vivid it's going to be? Sure. Yeah. Every year is different. I mean, we can have orange years and red years. We can have early years and late years. We can have uh, really compressed years, long, vibrant years. Uh, this year, uh, the biggest factor is the drought. Without much water, uh, the trees are stressed. They're going to push through the, the cycle a lot earlier. Um, but also drought years can be among our brightest. Um, when the leaves dry out, they concentrate a lot of sugars in the leaves and they can turn really vibrant red colors. Wow. Um, so with with cold weather, we'll be vibrant and early. All right. Well, it's starting to bloom. It seems to me uh, to be coming on faster than usual. We're, we're getting really colorful up here in the North Country as we record this. And it's funny you say that because I believe the, the last drought year we had, similar to this year, was 2016. And I remember the Reds being the most vibrant that year. Um, yeah, that's typical. It's yep, exciting, it, too. Um, Let's talk a little bit about um, some of your favorite spots here in the White Mountains. We first got acquainted with each other when you were a weather observer with the Mount Washington Observatory. So you know the White Mountains well. And uh, I believe that, that experience got you involved in photography. You've become quite the, the foliage photography, perhaps one of the, the best in the area. What are your, some of your go-to spots for viewing foliage? Sure. I mean, you can't beat a drive through the notches or over the kank this time of year, but um, I always like to get a couple miles under my feet in the fall. Um, I love the view from Black Cap. You can see Mount Washington in the distance and uh, the slopes of uh, Kearsarge North right there. Uh, you can get a great view across the whole valley. That's always great. Um, if you go up to Pinkham Notch, uh, the ledges right there, um, you know, even up to, to the, the big boulders, those, mm. are, those are all great spots as well. But, I mean, you just can't beat a nice foliage drive this time of year. You can't. And what about uh, for those who want to take a few memories home in the form of photographs, any quick photography tips as time of day make a difference or any uh, technical tips? Sure. Um, I love when the leaves are backlit, when the sun's coming through them and makes some glow. But uh, the real secret is, is a circular polarizer filter. And if people go onto Amazon, uh, they now make little clip on ones for your smartphone. Uh, so you can, for, for a couple bucks, get this filter for the front of your camera that really makes the colors pop. And uh, I recommend that for everybody before fall. That's fantastic. So how does it, it basically brings out the colors in the leaves by putting this over your lens? Yep. So the circular polarizer will take glare off the leaves. And um, a lot of times in photographs, you don't see the colors as bright because the, the, the lights are reflecting, you know, the, the color of the sky, the glare rather than the color of the leaves. So yeah, it takes it right off, makes them really pop in pictures. Jim, you've been photographing this area in all seasons, but some of your most spectacular, I think, have been your fall foliage shots. Um, tell me about some of your most memorable trips in the White Mountains. It seems like you're, you're photographing at dawn and at, at dusk. They, there's an expression that um, uh, art is 1% 100, is inspiration and a 99% perspiration, and I think that kind of holds true for your amazing work. Yeah, I, uh, I don't sleep much in the fall. I uh, have a full-time job as an educator. I work with Yankee Magazine, and, uh, you know, as soon as the weekend hits, I'm on the, I'm on the trails looking for foliage. I'm uh, going up to Pittsburgh this weekend, and uh, I just can't wait. But some of my favorite memories are, are just the real quiet ones, watching the mist rise in Eaton over uh, Crystal Lake in the morning, you know, seeing the fog burn off from, uh, from up high on a ridge as the valleys, like, kind of come into light. Those are the moments I really like in fall. It's uh, the weather's just so nice it, and it's quiet. And, you know, those, those are the times I really enjoy and like to capture for, uh, for everybody to see. Is there a lot of planning that goes into this? Because you have to find the location, scout them out, and also determine the right times of day and season to go? Yeah, yeah. I'm always looking at the sun angles and trying to figure out when, when scenes are going to be best. I'm planning year-round for places that I want to go seek out in the fall. All right. And in terms of peak foliage, when is it going to hit the White Mountains? Oh, geez. Uh, I mean, we could have a couple areas of peak as soon as this weekend, uh, up in the high elevations, up around Bretton Woods and Twin Mountain. 
Uh, I think North Conway is going to be early this year by about a week. Uh, I would think the first week of October, the maples are really taken off. Uh, usually it's around Columbus Day, so I'd, I'd be uh, on alert for some really high color coming very soon there. All right, Jim Salji, the foliage expert for Yankee Magazine and NewEngland.com. Thank you so much for giving us some of your time today, and uh, we hope you enjoy your travels around the White Mountains this fall. I can't wait. Thanks so much, Chris. All right, you're watching White Mountains TV.